with the spirit within. That's Sankhya philosophy. That's actually the subject of the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, by the way. Uh, and in the third chapter, uh, Arjuna, or actually Krishna says, thus far I've described Sankhya philosophy. Now I'm going to describe work and devotion. So in Padasevanam, the process of Padasevanam is that one begins to serve the devotees. When, when they're in the stage of Sadhu Sangha, the devotees basically are the path. Uh, we, won't, we don't know the path except for our association with the devotees. So service to the devotees becomes our Padasevanam. And then our Archanam, in that stage, in that early stage of devotional service, is offering prasadam. Uh, we'll make an altar with some pictures and we'll put the plate there and we'll say a few prayers or maybe just Hare Krishna, uh, according to our knowledge. And uh, that's the beginning of our process of archanam or worship. Should we say offering both? Offering, well, yeah. Just be, it's colloquially, colloquially known as offering prasadam. Even though the prasadam is actually the result of the offering of boga, which is for enjoyment, da 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 da. But, you know, just to save words, okay? Similarly, our vandanam, or our prayers, in the stage of sadhu sangha, are principally directed towards the guru. Typically, we'll learn the guru pranam mantra uh, for our, our particular guru, and then we'll say that prayer. Uh, several times a day when we offer obeisances to the guru and like that. And similarly, our dasyam, our service, will be guru seva. Uh, the guru will say, do this, do that, and then if we do that, if we actually follow, if we're intelligent, huh, we'll follow the instructions of the guru. If we're not intelligent, then, you know, something else may happen. But that's, <laughs> that's not dasyam. <laughs> that's concoction. <laughs> If we're actually uh, following the process, we'll, we'll do what the guru tells us to do, Riddha Das. And uh, let's, there, the next uh, stage or process, Sakyam, will be, we'll make friendship with the devotees. Uh, so, uh, because in the beginning stage, we, we can't make friendship with the Supreme Lord. We're not advanced enough to know what his purposes are and his nature is. So we make friends with the devotees. And then Atmanivedanam, our self-surrender, will be to the guru. If we actually surrender to the guru, then we reach the result of the stage of uh, Sadhu Sangha. And uh, we get the realization that the holy name gives transcendental knowledge and cleanses the heart. And so what happens? We become initiated by the spiritual master and we reach the next stage, which is bhajana kriya. In bhajana kriya, we uh, perform the service given to us by the spiritual master. And so in the bhajana kriya stage, we will hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Our Shravanam becomes Srimad Bhagavatam. Remember, Bhagavad Gita takes place on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. There's a war going on between the pious and the impious. Huh? So um, the battle for the heart of the living entity takes place on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. That's why we call the, the first uh, forum that people get involved in, we call that Kurukshetra Forum. Uh, because Bhagavad Gita is spoken there. And the end result of hearing Bhagavad Gita is Sarva Dharman Paritya Jama Mekam Sharanam Raja. Give up all these different processes of religion and just surrender to Krishna. Uh, if we just surrender to Krishna, then we accept this, the uh, orders of the spiritual master and we become initiated. And then we begin to serve the spiritual master according to his instructions and the instructions of the Shastra. So at this point, if we're following four regulative principles and so on, then we begin to hear from Srimad Bhagavatam. And of course, to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, because we have to be following the four regulative principles to do that. 
without making terrible offenses. Similarly, similarly, uh, our smarnam or our remembrance will be remembrance of the guru because the guru is our principal object of service in the stage of bhajana kriya. So we are always thinking or remembering our diksha guru. And similarly, our pada sevanam will be guru seva. Uh, guru seva means serving the guru, uh, supporting the mission and doing various services assigned by the Guru, and also Vaidhi Bhakti. Vaidhi Bhakti means regulative devotional service according to the rules and regulations in the scriptures. Now our Archanam in that stage will be offering Arati and Kirtan to the deities. This is the beginning of actual deity worship. We have to be in association with a bona fide spiritual master to perform this kind of worship because it requires quite a bit of instruction. So uh, one has to be pure following the rules and regulations and initiated by a bona fide master to even begin the process of deity worship. So we're getting deities now. I I guess everyone's seen the picture on the forum that Neville sent. And um, when they arrive, we also ordered a bunch of paraphernalia for worshiping them. And then we'll begin the process of archanam, and uh, we'll also begin teaching our disciples how to do this. Vandanam will be to pray for purity. In the first stage of uh, uh, Sadhu Sangha, our prayer was for a bona fide guru. By associating with devotees, one of the first things we learn is that we need a guru. So we pray for a guru. But once we have a guru, then we pray for purity. uh, Because the first thing we learn when when we are given the instructions of how to serve Krishna is that we can't do it. (laughs) We can't follow the principles. uh, We can't chant regularly. We can't study properly. We can't do anything right. uh, That's our first realization. So we begin to pray to Krishna, please purify me so I can actually follow the instructions of my spiritual master. And then uh, our dasyam will be our daily sadhana. We perform sadhana. To get purified, we perform sadhana in a regulated way. And also we perform karma yoga, where we gradually engage all aspects of our existence in the service of the guru. Uh, So, I mean, at this point in my life, for example, everything is completely engaged in karma yoga. There isn't anything separate from the service of the guru. And we should strive uh, for that. We should try to emulate that. Then our sakyam is, uh, our friendship is that we become a qualified disciple. Because when we're an offensive disciple, we're not being very friendly with our guru, are we? Uh, And there's some difference of opinion, some difference in purposes between ourselves and our spiritual master. But when our our purpose and the spiritual master's purpose become the same, that's real friendship. Uh, So when we attain this, uh, we're trying to become a a bona fide disciple and become purified. Basically, we're trying to become um, qualified as a servant of the spiritual master by adopting the same purposes. And then our Atmanivedanam is that we make a lifetime commitment. In other words, we surrender our whole life to the mission of the spiritual master, and in this way we become a perfect or bona fide disciple. So the result of all of that is that we are, uh, we experience that all of Krishna's potencies are invested in his holy name. Uh, If we actually become a qualified disciple, then Krishna will reveal the power of his holy name to us. And uh, at that point, we become a transcendental madman. (laughs) Right, Iskhan gets up to this point. Iskhan uh, Iskhan covers all of these... uh, these different areas of devotional service, or not just ISKCON, but any uh, formal organization devoted to 
the Vedic esoteric teaching can reach up to that point because this is actually the mesoteric stage of devotional service. But now starting with anartha nivritti, anartha nivritti means cessation of all unwanted things or uh, actually uh, it's the beginning of perfection. The devotee doesn't fall down anymore. I mean in ISKCON you even have gurus falling down. So like what, you know, what level is that? Uh, but in real devotional service, one soon reaches the level of Narta Nivritti, which means that they no longer have any desire for material activities. And their Shravanam, their hearing, if, if you have heard Srimad Bhagavatam, if you have really heard Srimad Bhagavatam, the result is you have no more desire for material activities. So then you can hear Chaitanya Charitamrita, which describes